Welcome to the program. I'm your host, Neil Howard, here on Health Professional Radio. We're going to have a conversation this evening with Dr. Mark Erlander. He's a CEO of Cardiff Oncology, and he's joining us here on Health Professional Radio to talk about their lead drug and uh, to talk a little bit about clinical trials in colorectal cancer, acute myeloid leukemia, and prostate cancer. Welcome to the program, Dr. Erlander, and thank you so much for taking the time. Oh, thank you, Neil. And please call me Mark from going forward. All right, um, do. Yeah, this. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Well, I was uh, just wanting uh, wanting you to tell us a little bit about yourself and then um, talk about what's being uh, done there at Cardiff Oncology. Yeah, I mean, I my background, Ph.D. Um, in biology, biological sciences, um, really um, went from there and uh, got into uh, really drug discovery uh, as my first job at Johnson and Johnson. And then Really, from there, went into some other biotechs, and and uh, then I ended up at um, a company called Provagene, uh, which was which was actually a a diagnostic company in, in oncology. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, we uh, we decided that the diagnostic business was um, kind of hard to sustain um, because of reimbursement. And uh, we decided that since the executive team was all had a lot of experience in developing. Uh, drugs and oncology that we licensed in the drug about three over three years ago, and then we just recently um, changed our name to Cardiff Oncology to really, um, in essence, put an explanation mark behind the fact that we really are focused um, in uh, clinically developing drugs in oncology or on that needs, and um, we are actually a clinically a clinical stage biotech in the sense that. When we, we say clinical stage, as you know, it means that we actually have a drug in clinical trials. So we're, um, we're really um, right there in the trenches, um, uh, in, but we're in three different areas, um, colorectal cancer, cancer-resistant prostate cancer, as well as leukemia, specifically uh, acute myeloid leukemia. Now, Cardiff has a, no. a, a lead drug uh, right now. Yes, that exactly. So that's the, in the three trials. Uh, it's called Onvansertib. Um, it's a highly selective uh, PLK1 inhibitor. Um, what is PLK1? PLK1 is, uh, is actually an enzyme. Um, it's uh, specific uh, to, um, it basically is needed to, for cells to divide. Um, however, tumor cells, cancer cells, actually hijack it. And um, they really uh, jack it up, overexpress it. Um, and so um, if you inhibit this enzyme, you can preferentially uh, kill tumor cells versus normal cells. Now, is this in all types, different types of cancers or these three specific? Yeah, it's, it's really, uh, yeah, it's a great question. You know, it's, it's really across the board. It's, it's, um, it is really, uh, if you look across multitude of different cancer types, um, there's always a subset of the most aggressive of that type, like in lung or colorectal or breast, where the, the subtype that um, is the most aggressive, the most deadly, are the ones that have hijacked PLK1. And so um, we, we've gone after, we're going after what we consider to be um, the cancer types right now with three different trials and three different cancers. Um, we're going after ones where we have this, you know, really a lot of um, preclinical scientific rationale, and, but also that there's also a huge unmet need as well in that particular Answer type. So, and of course, we are resource limited. We can't do every single cancer type. So, we really picked ones that we thought we, where we could have the greatest impact for patients. What were the uh, specific drugs that were used for these resistant types of, of cancer that you're talking about that uh, your lead drug is um, hoping to, I guess, surpass as far as use and um, outcome? Yeah, I, I mean, I could let me uh, pick one example. Um, let's go after uh, colorectal cancer. Um, in colorectal cancer, uh, 50, you know, about half, 50% of uh, patients who have um, metastatic colorectal cancer, it's obviously, it, it has spread, unfortunately. Uh, those patients um, uh, have a, a really uh, deadly uh, oncogene um, that drives the cancer. It's, it's called KRAS, K R A S, KRAS. And KRAS was uh, is part of the, what we call the RAS family, and it was actually the first uh, gene to be found that could cause cancer if it's um, if it's mutated. Um, and so, um, and I think there, um, what's happened is that um, the patients who have this uh, KRAS mutation or RAS mutation in their tumor, um, they 
they, in essence, only can receive um, chemotherapy cocktails, and they become resistant to those cocktails. Mm-hmm. Um, the tumors find a, find a way around it. And so um, what we've done is um, we found that in we found that actually um, these uh, tumors that have the KRAS mutation um, are actually particularly vulnerable to um, PLK inhibition. So in other words, I was talking earlier about how tumor cells in general will hijack PLK1 and overexpress it. Well, in tumor cells that have a KRAS mutation, um, it's even more so. And so they're, they're really very vulnerable, um, and we call it um, uh, the Achilles heel of a KRAS um, mutant uh, tumor, particularly in colorectal cancer. The Achilles heel is, is, is the target of our drug, PLK1. So on Vansertib, our drug uh, inhibits highly selective, it's uh, highly selective in inhibiting this PLK1 um, enzyme. PLK1 stands for pololite kinase 1, just for your interest. Mm -hmm. Um, So that's really kind of where we're going, is we're going in a place where uh, the the, the patient um, is receiving a chemo cocktail and they become resistant to it. And, and th- because they are, th- those patients um, have a KRAS mutation. Um, and also the drugs they're receiving, we also have, um, we actually work well with um, some chemotherapies um, as, as far as a one plus one equals five, as far as um, killing the tumor cells. So we call that synergy. Um, so we have what we call two shots on goal with colorectal cancer first, mm-hmm. Um, they were KRAS mutant um, metastatic colorectal cancer. The Achilles heel for that is inhibiting PLK1, uh, i.e., our ambassador our drug. We use our drug. And then, secondly, uh, shot on goal is the fact that one of the chemotherapies that they, that they use with these patients, um, we have synergy with it. So, we can actually, um, the effect of that, that chemo plus our drug together is not additive and it's not one plus one equals two, it, it's one plus one equals five as far as killing the tumor cell. When do you anticipate trials, all three of these trials to wrap and um, approval, the approval process begin? Well, you know, that's a, <laughs> that's a great question. Um, you know, a lot of it depends on, on uh, you know, the, uh, you know, how fast we can accrue patients and that sort of thing. And, and each trial is really on its own timeline. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, and also um, given the unmet need, each one has a different different unmet need. Uh, depends on how quickly um, we could get it approved. Mm-hmm. Um, I know that I didn't give you a very good answer there. I think the answer is really that the trials that we're currently in, um, we see those all being completed in 2021, um, and uh, hopefully with won't be impacted too much uh, with COVID-19 from the point of view of patient accrual. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I think that 2021 is where we would see these um, completed. And then from there, um, we would, uh, depending on, on the data, of course, um, we would then be seeking another trial uh, that would um, allow us to what, could do what we call a registration trial mm-hmm. for, for approval. Well, I, was, I mean, I was just going to say that I think it always depends on the data, and um, we we can, uh, depending on the data, if it continues to to look as good as it does in the colorectal cancer, we may be able to speed that process up significantly. Where can we go online, Mark, and get some more information about Cardiff Oncology? Well, it's it's I think it's just www.cardiffoncology.com, and uh, Cardiff Oncology just put it as all one word. Um, I don't think it's case sensitive, so it's real easy. All right. Well, well Mark, uh, thanks for, for coming on this evening. It's been a pleasure, and I'm, I'm hoping that you'll return and give us some more updates on um, what's going on there at Cardiff Oncology, especially as uh, we get closer to uh, the end of the trials and um, hopefully FDA uh, approval process gets started without a hitch. Thank you, Neil. Appreciate your interest and in, uh, the conversation. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Audio copies of this conversation with Dr. Mark Erlander are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, listen in, download it, SoundCloud, and be sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com, Health Professional Radio.